Whoa. So good, man. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. It's like a sandwich fried rice. Mad good, man. <coughs> Woo. So in this video, we're leaving Manhattan to check out some never before seen Asian food. It's mostly in Brooklyn, but a little bit in Queens. So by the end of the episode, I'll need your help on suggesting some other spots we need to check out. Hit that like button and let's go. All right, our next spot is not quite in Brooklyn, but it's in Math Beth, Queens, so it's pretty close. And I'm here with the Queens plug, Perry Stacks from Image NY. We're at Driftwood and this is a brand new Asian fusion restaurant. I mean, I want to say they're doing Asian fusion right here, but how would you describe the food here? So the food at Driftwood is uh, Asian Americana. They do uh, highly influenced with uh, seafood dishes. So uh, it's it's a mix of a little bit of Asian influence. All right, we're in the back of the kitchen at Driftwood with Shane. Shane, you're the chef owner. Uh, how would you describe Chef uh, Driftwood and what were you trying to do here? Uh, Driftwood is pretty much like my experiences working in fine dining, working in a lot of uh, casual restaurants as well. Trying to blend the two together, food that I like. Uh -huh. And then try to make it like an Asian Americana comfort food kind of style. I tell you, I know the food is gonna be good because look at his arms. He got the tattoos. <laughs> if your chef is not does not have tattoos on his forearm, forget it, alright? Does the chef have a full sleeve tattoo in his serving childhood dishes with French techniques? <laughs> All right, everybody, we got the starters here. What I think is cool about mala tots is that mala is like a seasoning that they're kind of sprinkling on everything, and it's just something that I wouldn't have expected. You know, tater tots, tots with mala. Yeah. Something so American, it's so Chinese now. Mmm. I'm gonna try it up with a little bit of uh, smalizzi. Mmm. These are so good, you guys gotta get mm. these. All right, we got the crab bows here. Never seen anything like it. Let's get Stone it. crab. Dang, man, I just came back from Boston and I had like a lobster roll and a crab roll. This, this is killing it, man. It's like an Asian lobster roll right here. All right, here we got oysters with a palmelo mignonette. Wow. Tastes the Asian pear. Yo, I never had an well, oyster that was like sweet and fruity too. That was crazy. Oh, yeah. it was really good. Got the two cheese dishes, cheese corn. Ooh. Mmm. So much grill flavor in this corn. It's crazy. The filling on this crawfish ragoon. A little peppery, a little cheesy. Really good. And then here, man, I have actually this tea sat this tea leaf salad. I feel I love the Burmese tea leaf salad, so I think I'm I'm really excited about this one. Whoa. I gotta try some of that. That was refreshing, man. Cuts through everything. Lots of different textures. You have nuts, you have fried wonton strips in there. You have corn. You have all these different ingredients. Wow. All right, so the entrees have arrived here at Driftwood in Math Beth, Queens. Math Beth is Math not ready for this. Um, What are we looking at, Mimi? So here we have our rice noodles, oh or in Chinese God. we call Oh, the churn fun. Look how little squishy these Brown things are. Butter. Look, they squishy. They squishy. Oh, this is a new ah. churn fun. This is not the old churn fun. Mm. Man, I have some wok hay. I, I taste the wok hay. Tons of wok hay. I get that salt and pepper vibe, and that is so delicious. So this is one of the signature dishes, right? Oh my gosh. It's like a sandwich fried rice. Let's go. Wow. Mm. The flavors come together really well. Oh, true smokiness. And that soy cured uh, yolk is crazy. What about this dish? So here we have our pork belly. So it's personally fried. Skin, you take it, lettuce fries, rice, and then you dip it in the peri peri vinegar. Wow. The peri peri vinegar, is it? That's your vinegar, bro. Yeah, peri peri vinegar right here. I love peri peri sauce. It's, a, it's one of my favorite, man. Shout out to Portuguese food. Try this. It almost feels like the first time I had Filipino lechon with the pineapple sauce, yeah, but it's like a spicier twist on it with the lettuce wrap. It's crazy. The skin is really good. Crazy. So this is kind of like your Korean chicken and waffles, but the waffles are like the, the Hong Kong egg waffles. Yeah. Wow. wow. All right. Cheers. 
Mmm. This is like eating an Asian American student union all in one plate. It's like you got some Thai chili, you got some Korean uh, chicken, the uh, gochujang sauce, and then you have the Hong Kong egg waffle, the gai danzai. Mmm. Sticky, salty, chewy, sweet. Taste delicious. some maple syrup in there. Yo, I'm going in. I want a piece of this. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Yo, that charred butter is... I don't even know if I've ever had charred butter in my life. <laughs> These entrees are going crazy. It's like, I'm trying to think. A lot of flavors going on. Yeah, of all the fusion inspirations that go into each dish, whatever Shane's doing is, he, that dude is creative. Guys, I'm here at Driftwood in Mass Beth, Queens, and I'm trying Smala on, they're so inventive, creative dishes here. Here I got the churn fun, but it's not just any churn fun. Mm, saltiness helps highlight the Smala. I love that. So good, man. I love it. I love it. All right, and last but not least for the hot dishes, we got their seafood boil in their very own Driftwood sauce. See what I do? So there's the sauce at the bottom here. This is like at the bottom of the bag that you would get. Gotta dip that. Little fingerlings. A little, looks like my thumb, look at that. A little thummy. Real yummy. Ha <laughs> Ah! Smala! The only time I'll pour Smala on my fingers. Get in there. Mmm. Mmm. Don't worry, I've been practicing. <laughs> Dessert, guys, and of course, it is still impressive. And we have a sweet potato cake roll that's kind of based off the Hong Kong cake roll. You can find that at any bakery. And then you have a- um, Milk tea pudding. Milk tea pudding, ooh, okay, okay. And then you have a persimmon turnover with ice cream. I've never had a persimmon uh, roll turnover. at all, bro. Yeah. This is actually one of my favorite things to do is like a la mode, so. I'm gonna try this roll. Cheers. Mmm. Whoa. Bourbon caramel? That's bourbon is very strong. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Let me try this milk tea real quick. Oh, that's smooth. Earl Grey. Classy. Guys, Driftwood, Maspeth Queens. Come over. Check it out. Grand Ave. It's incredible. New Asian restaurant right in a place that you wouldn't expect. All right, on to the next spot. See you guys later. All right, everybody, our next new Asian concept in New York City takes us out to Bushwick, Brooklyn. We're outside of No One. Uh, this is their Brooklyn location. I'm out here with a special guest, Jay Key from Righteous Eats. What's going on, y'all? Peace, right. peace, peace. Jay Key, you've had the food here. Yes, sir. How would you describe it to people? I would describe it as Korean American manifestation and food form. They have some new dishes that are different than their East Village location, yeah. so I'm really excited, man. Shout out to Jay Lee. Man, let's go check it out. Check it out. All right, everybody, we're here at No One. The place is blast amusing. A lot of uh, early 2000s songs and late 90s, I love it. It's got the vibe. Here we have their Korean burrata pizza. They have roasted uh, kimchi on the sauce along with a nice burrata piece. And then I've topped it off with some smala. Check the link down below. Great pizza. Light, crusty, crispy. Wow. Wow. All right, everyone, this is the premier new dish over here at No One in Bushwick. This is the Bulldog Pizza, the Bushwick Bulldog. Uh, Bulldog in Korean means essentially fire chicken, spicy chicken dish, except it's on a pizza. I love the idea of Asian pizzas. I'm so excited. Shout out to Jay for coming up with it. Guys, I think the pizza here is very impressive. It was spicy and it has the tteokbokki, the little rice cakes on top, and it's just super saucy. Everything here has a lot of flavor. There's a lot of cheese at this restaurant, so for those who are cheese adverse, watch out. But check out No One Bushwick. It's got a crazy vibe. It feels like a club. It feels like I'm at a hip hop club eating good food. That's why I like it. Shout out to Jay. On to our next spot. All right, everybody. Next up on Asian food in Brooklyn, we are 
here at Pecking House. Pecking House is started by a guy named Eric Wong, really cool chef. 11 Madison Park did the whole French train, bear type situation, created this spot. It's totally something different. It is not your Nashville hot chicken sandwich. This is their signature chili chicken, and it's made with Tianjin chilies and Sichuan chili crisps. So it's not just one type of chili. And I tell you this, I can smell it off of it right now. It kind of reminds me of Lao Ga Ma and a number of other things, but I'm super excited. Guys, we have the salted egg yolk. Here we have their chicken sandwich right here that's gigantic. And then their signature cornbread with like their apple honey sauce, which I'm gonna get into, but anyways, guys, uh, first comes first. This is what you gotta go with. This is a thigh, chili chicken, here at Pecking House. I'm very excited. Whoa. Huh. Mad good. Mad good, man. Eric, killing it. <coughs> Woo! <coughs> I think <coughs> one of the unique and cool things about this spot is that their water station over there, you can get sparkling and still water. As much sparkling water as you want. They don't even charge you for it. That was unlike any other chi chicken I've had. So let's check out the salted egg yolk. I'm gonna take a bite here. Man, it is so crispy. You can just see it, you can hear it. Guys, what I love to see is like Asians doing their twist on things, you know? And I think that's the great thing about America is that culture is shared. So they're totally infusing Chinese flavors, whether it's salted egg yolk or Tianjin and Sichuan chilies, all in a one piece of chicken. We just eat the skin real quick. That was so hot. That was so hot. I'm telling you, the Brooklyn crowd can take funky food. When you talk, talk about salted egg yolk, fried chicken thighs, I feel like Brooklyn people are down for that. Wow. All right, everybody, this is their picante chicken sandwich. It is gigantic. I'm about to cut it. Uh, I think it has two pieces of chicken filet in there. Let's see if this knife can go through. I'm pretty good at cutting things in half. The picante sandwich is their most popular and it actually infuses Latino flavors because I think the other co-owner is Latino. Oh my God, man. Look at this beauty. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys. I did bring smala. I don't know if I'm gonna need it here because everything here is already so, so spicy with mala, but let's check it out. This has Oaxacan cheese. Guys, this is the picante fried chicken sandwich here at Pecking House. Surprisingly, that whole thing stayed together pretty well. I like it a lot. I really love the cheese. It does kind of have like a deeper, darker, like, I want. I don't want to say like mole vibe, but like definitely something more from the chili peppers. It's very Mexican, but let's try some smala on it. Ooh. Wow. So good. All right, ending off here in Pecking House, guys. An O2 you know, Southern American food. You have cornbread here with real pieces of corn inside. I love it, man. You got a Chinese and Latino guy cooking fried chicken and cornbread with their own twist. I know you got a bunch of other people in Brooklyn doing all different types of foods. Um, I love the take and the quality on it. I definitely think you guys gotta check this spot out. Pecking House. Our next ultra modern Asian concept is Milu. I'm telling you guys, their whole aesthetic here is being copied in other cities. I don't wanna name any names, but look, you guys are looking at a egg tart, tan tat, soft serve. The owners are from Hong Kong. They were from 11 Madison Park as well. So you're really seeing like a lot of elevated fusion spots these days, but very few spots do it the right way. I think Milu is one of those that does it. Arch, you guys, like we said, this is a modern, elevated, almost like 
Western Hong Kong fusion. You are looking at Gong Chong Sa Man Yu, which is ginger scallion, um, you know, braised salmon, uh, steamed salmon, I'm sorry. You've got some of the broccoli right here, but look at, even at this salad, I think this is pea sprouts with cilantro and a lot of green onion as well. So this is different as well. But anyway, we gotta get into this. This is actually more of a home style dish. You do see Gong Chong you know, ginger scallion fish, but salmon, it's a little bit more of like, people do that in their family. We did it all the time growing up. That's why we gotta come back. Like we said, this food crawl of modern Asian concepts is brought to you by Smala. If you wanna get some, check out the link down below. All right, guys, we are at Grant Street in Bedford, one of the most famous intersections of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and welcome to the newest and smallest location of the Nan Shang Shaolongbao Empire. This is actually an express concept. They just opened it. Tons of to-go orders. But it should be the same original quality that you can get at Nan Shang in Flushing, which is the original location. So I'm really proud of this chain because they started in Flushing, they expanded in Manhattan, now they're in Brooklyn. I mean, look, they're serving Shaolong Baos to everybody, and I love this concept because you can freeze these Shaolong Baos and steam them up at different locations. So right here, we have their spicy beef Shaolong Bao. Uh, spicy beef is not a, a traditional flavor, but of course, I think it's a big hit with the Americans because Americans like beef. Do my little dip, my little vinegar ba bath right there. <laughs> Woo, that's spicy. That kicked me. I like it so far. Kind of tastes, it has a little Sichuan flavor. <laughs> it is spicy beef. They got soy milk too. All right, my other dish here that I really wanted to try is one of my favorite kind of combinations, which is a tungyo bing wrapped around some juicy beef. You might know this as a neuro dream bing. Um, really popular dish, lots of sauce. I'm assuming it's gonna taste a little bit like a Peking duck bao, maybe, who knows, let's see. Mm. What I really love about this concept is that it's exposing all different types of people uh, to traditional Shaolong Baos and some non-traditional stuff. But they have a lot of traditional stuff on the menu, I'll tell you that. I don't know if anybody's ordering them. But I think it's cool because this concept really feels like something more you would find in Asia as an express dumpling spot. So here I got Smala, of course, you guys. If you guys are interested, click on the link down below. Oh, let's douse it. Mmm. I mean, listen, guys, Nan Shang from Flushing to maybe the rest of the United States now, because once they get this system down and they're spreading all across New York, who knows? Maybe they're in different cities. So I'm really proud of them. But we got competition coming into town because Din Tai Fung is on its way to Times Square. So, you know, we'll see which one takes over. But I got the spicy beef one. I know it was pretty spicy earlier, but I'm going to add some small lot, make it extra spicy. Oh, my God. I don't even know if I if this is smart. Mm. Oh, that spicy beef one is good. Guys, Nan Shang, that may be the next great Shaolong Bao chain from America. Another new old thing you start to see too is Chinatown Concepts directly porting themselves over to uh, Hipster Williamsburg. So Big Wong Restaurant has been around since 1978. They basically replicated themselves here. Do I think they might have had an opportunity to hipsterize and modernize it? But do I also think some people like that 1980s style? I don't know. You tell me. Different strokes for different folks. 